perfect. Yeah. So something I, I, I look into, and maybe I should focus in on the question more for pivot irrigation. You talked about the sulfur, sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid. Do you think there's an opportunity to, or maybe we're dealing with too much water to take a, a triple 20 and help that knock bicarbonates within within the irrigation oh it absolutely would help Uh, you know a triple 20 or or something like uh you know particularly on that urea phosphate type chemistry okay you might see it in a you know i've seen things like 10 55 10 uh, if you were looking for the phosphorus a triple 20 um i like a 5 5 45 later in the season okay but all of these are pretty acidic formulations i i mean i do think you can get down in the two range if you're super saturating a tote okay and then injecting this is going to help all of it is pushing you into an acidic world um i know we have to live with a ph of seven and a half eight and a half sometimes but the plant's looking in that six and a half range well yeah well and i even i mean the plant the rhizosphere the plants can adjust that pH to where they they kind of need it. Within, oh yeah, within there. So, Mother Nature's smart. The plant <laughs> knows how to live in certain conditions. Um, but with that, I think to myself, can you take a let's just say triple twenty, or what'd you say a five five forty five? Yeah, there uh, uh, the one that I've been using a lot of is a five ten twenty seven. Okay, so five ten twenty seven. It's super acidic. I mean, if you're able to blend that with. I mean, arguably probably RO water in the perfect world and put that in a thousand gallon tank right by the pivot and then just inject it. I mean, yes, probably do a titration test if you wanted to get exact. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, but I, I think to myself. <clears throat> I don't think we have to be exact. Well, and I think. Any little bit helps. Yes, every any little bit helps. And I think to myself, you know, if we know that pivots, <laughs> I mean, in my area, uh, if we, there's a chance that pivot just stays running for two and a half, three weeks. Oh yeah, it just stays stays on. Yeah. So maybe maybe every Monday that pass is when you're helping knock out some more bicarbonates. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, because I, I I have seen when that ground just gets so hard on top. Oh just, yeah, absolutely. You know, because of the abundance calcium bicarbonates, all that jazz. So if we're able to take a acid, inject it through the pivot. We're moving in the right direction. Well, even we make a even a line cleaner type product. I okay. call it chelator. Okay. And and really, it's it's a really high quality fulvic acid. We'll add it through there to just to clean out some of the bicarb in the in the solution. Okay. Uh, we've worked with different soil surfactants. We have one we've been working with. We call Jackhammer. It's another acid based product that really helps to blast the bicarbonate there. But nothing, I mean, we're not, I'm not even looking to sell something here. You yeah. want some real deal advice. Uh, a lot of these guys are super overplying gypsum. Like, oh, we don't want the pH. I love the story. Don't want the pH to go up, but I want to condition the soil. But you've created a, a, an equilibrium that favors the gypsum. So you're not releasing any calcium. So my first recommendation to you is to get yourself a sulfur prill or a sulfur flower. I mean, sulfur flower is going to be cheaper. It's a pain in the... But it's cheaper. <laughs> yeah. You know, if that's it, band it. Get start doing 100 pounds a year, and you'll start to work on some real changes in the soil. Another one, we had this one field. Uh, they're doing tons and tons of gypsum every single year. I, I mean, I don't know why. Just because it was cheap... Uh, and you want to condition the soil, and you don't want to raise the pH. We're in that 8 range, 8.2, okay. I think it was. Okay. You know, in Panhandle area. Okay. And so we're just playing around. We're desperate, to be honest with you. We can't get any calcium into the field. And so some guy, we start looking at it. We had some calcium carbonate that we were working with. And in the agronomy book, you know, you re- you don't use calcium carbonate on basic ground. You know, never. Why would you do that? That's yep. it's stupid. We found, we put, it was a couple hundred pounds of this calcium carbonate down, and we freed up more calcium with that application than we did with tons of gypsum. Wow. Um, we Sulfur was expensive in that area. We couldn't do the sulfur. There were some reasons there. But it, that one, yeah, exactly. Wow. That one sent me back to the desk. And yeah. I'm starting to play around with the chemical formulas and the stoichiometry and all this, these names and stuff that I didn't even want to remember. <laughs> 
what we did, if you're in a calcium sulfate, a gypsum calcium sulfate, where that's the favored equilibrium, and you keep adding calcium sulfate, gypsum, 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 it's staying on this side. When we added the calcium carbonate, it was able to add more calcium to break the equilibrium and start freeing up some of the, the bound up chip. Gotcha. And then I start reading about the pH. pH is a weird scale. Yes, it it's is. It's not a ruler. Yep. And the when you the closer you are to the balance, the harder and harder and harder it becomes to change. But when I'm on these far ends, it becomes a lot easier to kind of manipulate a little bit. <laughs> yep, yep. And that point too was enough to free up calcium to really stop our problem. That is crazy. And then you know, worse comes to worse. You really and I know this one. I'm a foliar guy. I still argue with scientists over the effects of foliar, and it's ridiculous. So we were talking about corporate agronomists that are working major companies here, you know, and they'll, oh, there's no proven research that foliars work. That's bullshit. Uh, I, there, you absolutely can measure an effect of a foliar application, and I think I've said it a few times today. The soil is like an ocean. So when all else fails and you have an excuse for everything that everything to fix the soil, avoid the soil. I, I don't want to sound anti-soil health. I've been soil health king. I've been yeah. regenerative lately. I bought a microscope. Like, I'm into this. Yeah. But when you are in those environments where nothing else will work, Go foliar. Well, exactly. And if your challenge is within your soil profile, because there's going to be some situations where it's it's going to break the bank for you to try to correct and totally balance that soil. Oh, absolutely. So, so instead of worrying about that, manage around it. You know, so one thing I get to is like in my area, our K parts per million is higher than our mag. So we, we, can, we can have a mag deficiency. You will have a mag deficiency everywhere it doesn't yeah. matter what you do um i did some of one i was teaching in california for a little while i was in the central coast yep san luis obispo beautiful place on earth <laughs> and uh i learned geology not because i wanted to uh we were growing wine grape on serpentine soils what okay. sir i don't even know what serpentine is you know so you buy a new book you read this book serpentine is a parent rock for magnesium so our calcium to mag ratios were reversed and it didn't matter what you did, you could never get calcium into a root. It all had to be foliar applied. Okay. That's kind of what got me into this. I, I, I'm a chloride guy too. <laughs> I know you got to be careful. Yep. yep. But chlorides are amazing sources of free ions. Fair enough. Amazing that, that, sources. That's a good way to put yes, it. Yes, they're salty. Yeah. Well, and if you, and if you go way, way overboard, it can plug filter i mean plug the plant up if it's way over abundant yeah true true you know so um i just think everything in balance yeah, is yeah. The, it's just how you're the, right that's you know. full circle back yeah and it is it's totally balanced yeah oh yeah because if your calcium's that high you you'll always have a mag deficiency yeah and what's magnesium we got hemoglobin <laughs> iron's in the middle yeah chlorophyll yeah. Mag. magnesium well and Kind of going back to that point of some, I mean. Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major pla podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.